three, uh, the Bach area, Hoschgeldenis and all that stuff. And um, most of you, a lot of you know the whole history of this, the excavation of this area. Um, we've been excavating here since 1997, and um, our first season was characterized, I suppose, by the excavation of some Byzantine burials, the kind of thing that's familiar to those of you in the West right now, some late Roman um, or Byzantine, sort of, that were dug into the Neolithic building itself, or across, in fact. And um, then in uh, 1998, we, our building was sort of dominated by taking out the superstructural materials. Actually, we started this in 97 as well. And um, right from the beginning, this, the, this building is, was uh, kind of cut in three pieces. Um, there's this, this space along here, which we call space 158, separated from this larger space called space 86 by this kind of interior wall that is solid at each end but is very kind of um, tentative at, in the middle and is in fact so, so, I don't know, lightly constructed that we call it a screen wall in fact, not a real, not a real um, structural wall. So, um, right, and this space 86 itself was, was really divided into two parts in terms of the fill. One was characterized by the collapsed roof, so this, that was the kind of in situ collapsed roof materials that occupied us. And some of that is down in the museum and also in the uh, floral, the paleo botanical lab. There's a big block of it if you're interested and that's from the roof and eventually perhaps we'll do a micro excavation there and we took a large number of samples for micromorphology, flotation, uh, for paleoethnobotany, for phytoliths and so on from there. The other half, the, the southern half of this building was characterized by a, a rare, very rich um, and varying types of midden. Each of the corners, the south Southeast corner, and in fact, that south, that southern corner of space 158, were filled with a really rich black midden, and then um, in this area it was a fantastic mess of structural, superstructural debris, and at the bottom of that we found a very rich, an area of enormous numbers of scapulae. We called it scapularium for that reason. And this was like the primary midden deposit after this half of the building was, was um, um, abandoned. So from that point of view, we, we think that the roof actually collapsed first and that this, this half of the building at least was filled up, is the latest part of the fill. So um, then last year, we got through all of that superstructural debris and were down on the floor area, started to excavate the platform floors and the central well floors here. And um, this again is not, you know, it's again not sort of typical and clean like some of the buildings with, with a very clear history. It's, it's a very, uh, seems to be a very complicated and messy history and, and with a lot of destruction of features. Um, I'll just sort of show you the configuration. The, well, there's one platform here, this white platform next to the red painted wall there, another platform over there in the northeast corner, uh, another platform here. These are like continuous platforms, one here as well, and then in the in the southeast corner, it's a little more complicated because uh, it seems that there was some kind of a bench and then a low platform and then the very latest, in one of the latest events in building this, this um, room at least, was that um, little, little platform, little step area over there in the southeast corner. And then there's one other very large platform, very uh, damaged by Neolithic digging as well as animal holes, later animal holes in this corner. And the platforms and the whole central floor area at this end, just again, you've got the difference between the south end and the north end. And you can see in a nice boundary between our dirty area at this end, 
with this, this white wall, this sort of white little bank, low bank here, that separates a large area of a large oven or some kind of fire installation here in the floor, as well as a number of smaller fly, fire installations, probably a ladder area over there, and this whole kind of mess, messy, no nice white floors at this end. On, at this end, on the other hand, there are a number of white floors, which may not look so white right now. Over there, it doesn't look so white, because Bashak and um, Laurie have been sitting on it and doing stuff. It was, it did look really nice and white. This one, this, <laughs> this one did look, uh, it doesn't look very nice and white because in fact we are at the, the we've just cleared a layer of packing. But um, in general, these three platforms are much, much more carefully constructed and preserved and layered and plastered than these, than this southern area. And in the center, we have this, this kind of central well of floors that we've been taking down, and they also are characterized by different kinds of fire installations. Um, all of the fire installations in this, this area here are much smaller than the ones here. Uh, you can see in the various cuts that have been made in through the platforms that we still have quite a way to go with taking down the platform floors. Uh, these two cuts here, as you, probably most of you can recognize, are what we call post-retrieval pits. And these two cuts in the platforms are burial pits. This one we actually excavated last year. This was the first of our burials, probably the latest as well. And this one is dug from a slightly later floor, I think, uh, in this platform. And you can see that's in the process of cleaning. They've done a wonderful job cleaning, and that's just ready to be drawn. So you can have a look at that. Uh, later on. And now as we start to take down these platform floors, we can see possible burial pits popping up all over the place. There's one here, which will be our next one to be cleaned. I think there's something going to come up very soon over here. It's looking very suspicious. And um, there's some other stuff in this as well, but I'm not quite sure what's going on. In addition, we've got some very suspicious looking pits, cuts, over here in the western side of the floor itself, especially at this end, and this also might be the less frequent occurrence of uh, burials actually in the floors themselves. So the burials are done throughout the history, just like in Building 1, Building 5, throughout the history of this, um, of this Building 3. And the sequence of Building 3 is incredibly complicated, as is shown on this side. You can't see it very well because the sun's all shining in our faces. But you can see that the west wall of Building 3 doesn't look very nice. It's not very, it doesn't look very aesthetically pleasing, unlike the nice walls around here. Uh, that's not just because it wasn't plastered in the same way as the others. It wasn't. But uh, it's also because this whole... Um, space or this whole west wall went through a number of changes in direction and repairs and shoring up. Um, right now we can see finally the original line of the west wall down here, the series of red bricks that uh, um, you can see the layer of plaster just along there, maybe if I come in here, just along here and then um, at that point, the floor of space 158 was right down at the same level as um, this uh, space 86. And then this um, screen wall was also there at that time. Of last year, we thought that the screen wall was fairly late in the sequence of building this, uh, this building. But now we think that, in fact, the screen wall itself has gone through a kind of varied and complicated sequence. And we can, in fact, see at least two phases, an early phase in, in the building of the screen wall and, and a later phase in which it was enlarged, made fatter, larger, higher, probably. Um, so the sequence of the west wall, I'm not going to go into all the details now, but in fact, right uh, fairly early on, it started to collapse inwards and was shored up um, it possibly did collapse onto the screen wall and that's why they did the repairs in here. But also it was shored up along this um, 
along this edge here by um, cutting back cutting back the original wall and also then gaining themselves a few inches of space and building this uh, temporary wall, what turned out to be a temporary wall, because that also collapsed inwards. What was pushing all of this downhill, we're not sure whether it was a midden on that side or whether it was some kind of just um, gravity. But anyway, so the final shoring up and repairs on this, on this wall were done in which a whole, um, whole set of packing uh, materials were shoved against the wall here, all through, all through this area along here. In the, um, before that final packing and uh, abandonment of Space 158 happened, in fact, this, some of this area had been used at this higher level of floor for um, bins, and there was a niche there which we've now taken out. So what we're doing here is now gradually, fairly quickly, taking down this floor down to the lowest uh, floor. It's, it's l early floors down below. So we hope to finish this this, this um, summer. Um, it's sort of a daunting task, but it's now becoming clearer, so I think we'll be able to maybe, maybe get it done. So and as long as not too many burials turn up. So that's, that's it. These three spaces up here, for those of you who aren't um, familiar, are three quite separate spaces from, from this building three. They seem to be probably later and were added. Um, they, they may be related to each other. The two here especially seem to have some um, common uh, features, but they've generally um, they have storage materials, especially this one and that one, storage um, bins. That one was full of, of a very rich midden um, and also materials that were thrown in from uh, some kind of sculptures as, as a, a depos depositional deposited sort of some kind of sculpture um, materials just like we saw down in the south last year or the year before. So, any questions before you all bake? No, good. Well, you can just walk round. Uh, don't walk along here. You can walk round the whole periphery along there. Okay. This is number eight. Today we've got... Uh, do you want to go down there? Just but so that you can cover it. Uh, the grave is looking really good. They've cleaned it all now, uh, ready for drawing, right? We've got a little bit of dry, uh, cleaning over the rib section right here yet to do, but most of it is ready to uh, be gone. Your bones are badly preserved, you said? They're pretty badly preserved. They're actually breaking apart. You can see how crushed the skull is. Mm. The teeth are falling out because the socket, the bones of the socket are pretty well gone. Uh, the long bones are cracked almost in all of them. Very few ends are preserved, although we have a pretty good um, femur there, pretty good elbow um, here. But the guy himself is actually in, was in good health when he, he was... He seems like, after, uh, from uh, infield observations, it looks like he's in pretty, was in pretty good health, although, <laughs> of course, he did die. And um, Laurie lost a chocolate bet. <laughs> I did. It looks to be a uh, male from an infield um, observations again. Um, Possibly 30 to 40 kind of age range, although we can't really tell until we look at this area, right. here, which is the pubis, and that's going to give us a good indication of how old it might be. Okay, um, so then you'll draw it tomorrow. And, it. Yeah, <gasps> wonderful. Thank you. Space, um, I mean, feature 631, oh, rather 617, sorry. The other grave, um, Pedja drew the, drew the other profiles today showing the... Um, the possible cut through the eastern part of this under the floor here and um, we also drew the platform with the possible uh, burial cut in it on the eastern part. I, I actually also cut um, this little notch, 15 centimeter notch from the meter line south on the bulk just to have the edge a little clearer. In platform 170, feature 170, um, we took off floor, fi uh, floor 5 
Uh, actually, first of all, we took it down in the southern part, down to an, or an organic, cleaned up an organic surface um, across, uh, took off floor four uh, down to this organic black stuff on top of floor five. And then we took off floor five in the southern half. So far, we haven't taken it off in the northern half. Um, you know, I also cleaned the edge, got a new, slightly new configuration of the west edge in this part at least. I know it's this nice little um, stuff in the profile, the southern profile of the east-west bolt, showing the um, floors of platform 170, looking towards the north, um, and it's meeting with the floor. Uh, so here in 170 what we'll do now is to uh, take off the packing below floor, uh, floor 5 as a separate unit down to floor 6. That's um, after we've done floor 5 in the northern hall. Um, to the, just to the south of platform one se uh, feature 162 um, and 173, Mira cleaned this animal hole and gets a nice profile here of the floor levels, of the central floor levels, showing that we're not, um, we still have quite a few floor levels to go and we should be able to link them, use the animal hole to link the two platforms here and link it to the uh, profile, the north profile of um, pit feature 602. In the north central area, this um, pit, this uh, fire installation was clean, started to be cleaned today by Vuk and he's going to see the little white dots there for their, uh, their digital mapping of this feature. And it's very nice, he's cleaned off now some of the superstructure, we took photos, and um, so that's it, that white part so far is not any bigger up at that end. Over here, this um, part of the platform, this 169, was uh, planned, drawn today, and a bit more, I think another floor has been taken off here, I should check on that. In the um, central area here, just to the south of the white bench, uh, we started to take off um, some of the floor, uh, one layer of floor, to reveal some other kind of fire installation in the corner. You can see it there, there, and then possibly another one being dug from slightly higher up. These are these funny little small fire installations in the center of the space. Uh, feature 606, very different from the big fire installation up here on at the north, uh, southern end of sp uh, space 86. That is north, uh, south of the big white bench. In space 158, um, at the northern end, Mira has been cleaning this, the floors, Mira and Heidi have been cleaning the floors down here and of show, see this big hole, this big cut in the middle, that's one thing, which possibly might be a burial or not. But most interestingly in this area what she's got is the original line of the central, the screen wall or the central wall anyway. And you can see it there, those white, that white line there of the plaster and the bricks underneath. So this is the original wall. And it looks as though this area was in use at least um, after the first shoring was done at this level of the floor. And the same goes for the other end, the southern end was also in use uh, for storage bins and so on in this floor, with this floor at this level, this higher later level. And in the middle where the light shadow is now, there doesn't seem to be any floor. So the suggestion is that that was not used, it was a some kind of a shored up area or whatever.